Welcome to ProPractice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and I'm excited to announce a new mini course covering the Schmidt Preparatory Exercises 94 through 169. Previously, in a uh, the first mini course that I covered on the Schmidt exercises, we went over some basic five finger patterns and we covered exercises one through 93. By popular demand, many of you, <laughs> I'm coming back to you with this because many of you have emailed me saying we would love more technique videos, especially in the beginner and intermediate levels. So these are exercises that I cover with every student. I actually take all of my students through exercise 169 um, when they're beginners or even intermediate if they need a little remedial work with hand independence. I've even done this with advanced students before, but these go pretty quick um, once you get the hang of them. You do need to be patient with yourself because we're doing things that are pretty like brain teasers. They're, they're, they tangle the fingers. They're not intuitive always. So we're holding notes just as a review. This is exercise 94. And then we're doing things in other parts of the hand. Okay, so before you start doing any of these new techniques, I'm, each of these 10 videos is going to go over a unique way of practicing, as I mentioned, so that you have this arsenal that you can draw from. But before you do those unique ways of practicing, do what we did in the first batch of Schmidt videos, which is a nice staccato rendering. And then legato, you may wanna take your legato a little bit slower it's a little harder. Okay, 95. It's just an inversion of 94. Okay, so what is the time crunch exercise, our unique way of practicing uh, in this video? This worked so well the other week uh, for a student. I had to come up with this for him. As a teacher, you often have to create new methods of practicing for your students because um, the traditional methods didn't work for them and you've got to be creative. So we came up with this and I was like, I want to share that in this video because it's something that I actually apply. Um, I just never gave a name to it. Uh, I apply in my own practicing is what I was going to say, and I've never given a name to it, so we'll call it the time crunch exercise. We're going to give three counts per note, and then we'll give two counts per note, then one, then fractional seconds per note, or fractional counts per note, just getting higher tempos at that point. So here we go. Let's do it staccato in 94. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And I don't care if you're one, two, three. One, two, three. The whole purpose of this is to give you an opportunity to check that the right notes are still being held down and the other notes have been released. Two, three, one, 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 two, three, one. Okay, now let's just do two. One, two, 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 Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. That that ending's a little weird because you gotta lift up the three in order to play the last note there. You can lift the C as well. I don't think I've been doing that. Okay. Um, now let's just do one count, and rather than saying one, 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 which is kind of annoying, let's just count one eanda, two eanda. We covered different ways of counting in the first batch of Schmidt videos. Now in this second mini course, we're gonna just use some of those old methods to help us with these new methods. So we'll go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. And then you can go faster. And you can do that staccato as well. Okay, let's move on to 95. So this one we're gonna target legato, but we'll still use the three, two, one fractional second method, the time crunch method. So two, three, check to make sure that five lifted and nothing else is down besides your held notes, your whole notes. Two, three, one, two, three. It helps to look at your fingers. Two, three, one. So memorize the pattern and then look because you can check. Oh, I missed that one right there. I, I wanted to lift off of the three. So you can just, if you mess up in the middle of the exercise, by the way, I'm not going to edit out mistakes. Uh, because I want you guys to see how I recover and I'll also explain different methods of recovery. So if that happened where I'm going there to there and to there my three wants to lift, what I'll do is I'll create a little exercise 
Okay, that's calming my hand down. So you can just isolate those two notes that, that didn't work out for you. Okay, and then picking up, we'll pick up on beat three. One, two, three, 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 one. Okay, and then one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and then lift the three there so that you can come to the E. And then you can go faster. Like that. That's the goal. So if this method's not helping you, you ditch it. But I do think that, especially the three second one, allowing yourself to check things along the way. And then if, if you're having trouble with that one, you can just isolate that. You could do it staccato. Okay, let's move on to 96. I have another little thought for you.